What is going on YouTube? Joe here with Color Nation Media and we're here today to discuss Smogon's tier changes of September 2014. We're going to be taking a look at each individual change, which uh, should already be updated on the Pokemon Showdown uh, team builder, so you may have noticed a lot of these changes already. Today, what the point of this video is, basically, we're going to be just taking a look at and discussing how this is going to affect each individual meta, how it might affect your team building, how it affects certain strategies, basically what effect do these changes have on the competitive landscape right now, uh, why are they important, why does it matter, why should you care about it, that kind of thing, or maybe you don't care about it, I don't know, but there was quite a few changes so I figured it would be a good idea to uh, just talk about them a little bit and get some ideas out there, we can bounce some ideas off each other so feel free to uh, comment any a thing you'd like in the comment section below of course and if you'd like to see more videos like this make sure clicking the uh, thumbs up button below this video because remember it always helps out now uh, I need to switch my graphic over here there we go we've got uh, as you can see quite a few changes and I'm gonna start in OU just because that's what I want to start with so we got Magnezone, Gothitelle, Mew, Slowbro, and Heracross all moving to OU Magnezone really isn't that big of a deal we'll start there I guess Magnezone, I believe, was BL right before uh, this change, so that's really not that much of a change. Uh, all that means is that if it was BL, its usage was enough to be in UU. It was just deemed too powerful and banned from uh, the UU metagame. So you can only use it in OU before anyway. All that means is that its usage has gone up enough for it to actually be officially bumped up to OU. Uh, it does pretty well in OU. There's quite a few sets that you can run. Assault Vest actually works fairly well. Uh, Choice Scarf, Choice Specs, and even Life Orb as a Steel Killer, quote unquote, because it gets that nice Magnet Pull ability, and uh, HP Fire just poops on most of the Steel types in the tier. Especially things like Scizor, which can be a huge threat to your team. Um, or, you know, Scizor can do so many different things. Um, so, you know, if it's a, if you notice that it's a defogger, it's a specially defensive scissor, you want to get rid of it so you can set up hazards, Magnezone is perfect to trap it, and it's just, it's a good time. Uh, the one thing that Magnezone doesn't take on so well is Heatran, because Heatran obviously is immune to those fire type moves, so that is a thing. But anyway, uh, yeah, Magnezone does, uh, good work in OU, really not much is gonna change because it can only be used in OU before anyway. Then we have Gothitelle jumping up to OU, which makes a lot of sense to me, just because of its ability. I know I saw a lot of people complaining, specifically about Gothitelle, saying that oh, it's, it's not OU worthy, and it's not good enough to be an OU, and that's trash, and blah blah blah. I, I understand what you're saying, because its stats are not really the best. And its typing kind of stinks too, I mean, pure psychic is kind of bad. But, Shadow Tag is not legal in UU and below now. That was a, a fairly recent change, so... Uh, what is this other ability? Frisk? Something like that. Uh, yeah, it is Frisk. So, there's really no reason to use Gothitelle if you're not using the Shadow Tag. That is its niche. And, basically, uh, since it's not legal since, uh, below UU, why would people use it? People aren't going to use Gothitelle when there's plenty of better options. Um throughout most of the other tiers. Now in OU, pretty sure Shadow Tag is still legal as far as I know, so it's great. It worked like a charm last gen in OU as well, and I know you can't always just compare generations like that because last gen's OU was a lot different with the weather wars and the perma weather being everywhere, and that's what every team was based around. But Gothitel was great last gen, for example, for trapping certain weather inducers and just killing them off and you can trap certain Pokemon set up all over them with calm minds and stuff you can rest up it, it's it it's a very not not a versatile Pokemon but a very very useful ability and it's worth goth tells seemingly bad stats so basically that's what I'm saying uh, do I think it's gonna get used in OU yeah, obviously, because uh, if its usage is enough to bump it up to OU right now and not have it be in BL, then so be it. Or or even UU. I think it was UU uh, coming into this little change. Anyway, uh, that's enough about Gothitelle. Let's take a look at Mew. Mew is one of those Pokemon, uh, again, a lot of people think that it belongs in UU. But it is so versatile. Remember, Mew has such a ridiculous ridiculously huge move pool and base 100 stats across the board which means it can pretty much run any kind of set that you want to 
Uh, basically anything that you want. Anything that you need on your team, you can fit that role. There sometimes are better options for that specific role. So Mew is only used for certain things. The most common thing that I've seen Mew, yeah, Mew used for, of course this is when it was still in Mew Mew, but it was Stallbreaker Mew with Taunts and just Roost, I think, and then uh, Knock Off was its only attacking move. So I think that's a little bit of a waste of a Mew, to my personal uh, thought on it, but there's so many different uses. It can go offensive, it can be physically defensive with Will-O-Wisp, it can be specially defensive. It can do so many things. Uh, it's so hard to predict what it's going to do. So that kind of strategy and that kind of play style usually belongs in OU. So I can see why Mew would go there. Uh, also, we have Slowbro. So that is to be expected. I'm not sure where Slowbro was last gen. I guess I could double check that and I am actually going to do that right now just so that I am not talking um, just stupidly, although I do do that sometimes. Let's take a look. This isn't going to be on your screen, but I'm looking on uh, Smogon's website right now. Uh, it looks like in last gen Slowbro was UU. So going up to OU is, a, is some new territory for Slowbro, which Personally, I understand it. it. It gets used so much just because of its ability to wall physical attackers. It's so good at what it does, especially with that regenerator ability. It's got access to T-Wave. Its move pool isn't bad either. I mean, you could run a Calm Mind set. You could just run fully physically defensive with the Rocky Helmet and regenerator off the damage. It gets uh, reliable recovery outside of that in Slack Off. Um, or you could even run Assault Vest, which was fairly common for a while with, what does it get, Fire Blast, Psy Shock, Ice Beam, basically a whole slew of things. So I can see why Slowbro would move up. Now, there are a lot of physical attackers, a lot, a lot of physical attackers in OU, so I can see, again, why it was used enough to have its use, or, er, yeah, blah, 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 can't talk, oh my gosh, I can't do English sometimes. Uh, I can see why its usage bumped it up to OU. Makes sense. I'm just going to abandon that thought because I can't uh, apparently convey what I'm thinking. Let's move on here. We've got Heracross, regular Heracross moving up to OU uh, because I believe Mega Heracross was considered BL. Now regular Heracross is doing the Gardevoir move and moving up to OU and uh, people really aren't going to use regular Heracross. I haven't seen it used even in UU. So it's kind of crazy to think that its usage is going up, but I believe using it even with the Megastone still counts as its usage, so I guess that's why it's going to be moving up. Um, but with things like Talonflame running around in OU, Heracross as a regular non-Mega Pokemon without that extra bulk and extra firepower, I don't see it being very successful or very used at all, especially towards the top of the ladder. That's just... That's just my opinion on it. I do think that uh, Mega Heracross is going to continue to see a lot of success, but the regular one, probably not so much. All right, moving on, we are going to BL, where uh, Scallopede has dropped back down. Uh, it was OU, it was BL for a while, and then it was OU, and now it's back to BL yet again. And remember, all that means is that Scallopede's uh, usage stats would make it UU by default, but because it is deemed too powerful for UU, it is stuck in BL, so you can only use it in OU. And the main reason that it is BL is because of that speed boost. And I know other Pokemon get speed boost and are in lower tiers, like Ninjask and uh, Sharpedo and such, but Scallopede also has yeah, access to Baton Pass, which makes it incredibly, incredibly good. Because even though Baton Pass was nerfed, it still wreaks havoc on lower tiers. And Scallopede can do other things too. It has access to hazards in uh, Toxic Spikes and Spikes, and it can also uh, run an offensive set with Swords Dance. So a little bit too versatile for the lower tiers, I'm guessing, uh, with that speed boost. So really not a whole lot to say there, so we'll just move on. Uh, that really doesn't change the meta at all. Uh, we're gonna move on over to uh, the right side of your screen there, looking at UU, Vaporeon, Togekiss, Deonsi, Espeon, Smeargle, and Quagsire all dropping down into UU from OU. I believe they were all OU. I'm looking at it. Yep, Quagsire didn't last that long in OU. Uh, I believe he went to OU in June, and now already uh, just a few months later, he's dropping back down to UU. Uh, I guess 
Well, I should probably start from the top of the list. We got Vaporeon here, which I think is a great addition to UU. Um, I really, I know it probably saw some success in OU, even at the top of the ladder, because it's got Water Absorb, and Scald is a thing, it's got a ridiculous HP stat, it's got great natural special defense, and it actually has some decent firepower behind it too, the decent special attacking stat. So, nobody ever used it as a special attacker, it was always used defensively, usually invested in its physical defense to patch up that weaker stat, and then uh, combine that with like Wish, Protect, Toxic, and Scald. Usually that was the standard set. I think uh, we may see Vaporeon used a little differently in Yu I'm not really sure. Uh, we do have to make up for losing Slowbro and Mew as defensive Pokemon, so uh, a lot of these on the list, I'm thinking, are going to be defensive. I don't know. I guess time will tell, but a nice a nice bulky water type is always good. Uh, we'll give some uh, competition to Milotic, so we'll see how that goes. I'm very curious to see how Vaporeon will do, or if its usage is just going to drop even further. I'm not really sure. Uh, so moving on, Togekiss is dropping to UU, and this is one that I don't really like so much. And I didn't get to make this announcement at the beginning of the video, but uh, for people that say they don't agree with certain things, or, you know, that people, especially the people that are blaming Smogon and, like, just complaining about this stuff, this is based on usage. These things aren't banned or voted on or anything like that. This is just usage stats. Um, that's how the tiers are formed, basically. If a Pokemon is used a lot, it goes to OU. If it's used a little less than that, it's in UU. If it's a little less than that, are you? And so on and so forth. So, uh, if you want a certain Pokemon to move up, I guess just get a bunch of people to use it. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. But Togekiss is one of the few on this list. There's only not even a handful of Pokemon that I personally am not going to enjoy seeing in uh, whatever tier it's moving to. Togekiss is one of them, just because uh, of the way that it's typically used, and I'm talking about Paraflinch, I'm talking about Scarf Air Slash Spam, which uh, with the Serene Grace is just incredibly, incredibly annoying to face. Um, and UU has surprisingly been moving away from Stall a little bit. Uh, Stall has been running rampant in RU and even increasing in usage in OU, but UU it's been decreasing, which is great. Uh, that's fantastic because most players don't want to play against it, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, so I'm hoping that we don't see Togekiss used in that way. Um, I mean, if it can still be a defensive Pokemon, there's nothing wrong with that, but I think uh, I speak for a lot of players when I say it's really annoying uh, to see the Paraflinch stuff being spammed all over the place. So yeah, maybe we can just keep that at the bottom of the ladder, that would be great, I don't know. I guess uh, we shall see. And I mean, we kind of needed to add something defensive-ish with Slowbro being gone because Slowbro could handle things like uh, Victini and I was gonna say Scarf Heracross but it's not even in UU anymore uh, so yeah 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 all right so we also have Deonce dropping down to UU I would not even be surprised to see it drop down into RU in another month or two just because of how much of a liability it is to most teams because yeah its defenses are great but its HP and speed are fairly trash um, as far as, uh, well, how do I want to say this? In OU, it was a complete liability. It may not be a liability in lower tiers. Uh, just because its move pool is trash and its HP is trash, it doesn't really get any reliable recovery outside of rest. It's just, it's a whole big thing. Not to mention, in OU, bullet punches and steel type moves like uh, with priority, like Mach Punch, which is uh, actually not super effective, but Bullet Punch is four times super effective. They fly around all over the place, so Deonzi really didn't have much of a chance to shine. This is to be expected. Uh, I, I really don't think Deonzi belongs in OU at all, and I'm not even convinced that it's going to work out that well in UU. We're going to have to see. I haven't, I haven't really come up against any on Showdown yet, just because it was stuck in OU, so uh, we'll see if that changes anything. Uh, other than that, really don't have many comments on Deonce at all. Uh, Espeon is an interesting one dropping to UU, and that is because really the only set that I've seen this gen so far is the light clay dual screen set. That's one that I like to run myself. I think it works really well, especially because of how, of, uh, blah, of how fast Espeon is. But it was kind of outclassed as an offensive uh, Pokemon in OU, so that may be part of the reason why it's dropping down. 
It was also very, very susceptible to priority, even priority that it resisted, like Mach Punch, just because its defenses are kind of bad. And it does get recovery in Morning Sun, but that's really not enough because uh, in most cases, Espeon can't find an empty move slot to add that in anyway. So uh, in UU, I think Espeon is going to be a great fit. We may see it start to get used uh, offensively. I think it can run a Calm Mindset. Um, I think it could just run a Life Orb, just all out attacking set. And we probably will still see the Light Clay set uh, work just as well, if not better in UU. That's one that I'm really excited to use, and I might actually do my next UU session with an Espeon. I don't know. Uh, so that's cool. Then we have Smeargle dropping down into UU. This is another one that moved up to OU in June. So uh, Smeargle didn't last a whole lot, or a whole lot, a whole, a whole lot of time, I think is what I was going for there. I don't know. I just can't talk today. It's the first recording of the day, and apparently that means that you can't speak English. Um, so yeah, Smeargle's dropping down to UU. So we're going to have the uh, Smeargle leads with the Spore or the Dark Void, Stealth Rock, Spike, Hazard Stacking, or that plus uh, the, what else do they like to do? Baton Pass Shenanigans, sometimes even Geomancy Power, that's funny. Uh, so it really, I don't think it's going to affect things other than you might see some more Smeargle leads. Really, that's about it. It didn't get used a whole lot in OU, obviously, because it's dropping down to UU. And that's because it, there's just there's just better things. There are better things. So really, not a whole lot to say there. Uh, Quagsire again, as I mentioned earlier, was another Pokemon that um, did not last very long in OU. It got used a lot for a while. I'm not sure exactly how I feel about this. Uh, even though Quagsire can come in and usually handle things like Victini, although uh, its Psychic type stab might be an issue. Quagsire is kind of a mandatory Pokemon on most stall teams, and that's one reason why I really don't like it. Because you're just we're just adding more potential for stall, and I know it has to be it has to be a balanced metagame. So complaining about stall, it, it it has to be able to thrive. So adding another Pokemon that can do something, I guess that's just that's just what it is. But unaware. Uh, is why it's so prevalent on stall teams because setup sweepers, which would normally wreck stall teams, uh, Quagsire really doesn't care, and then it can burn things with Scald, it can toxic them, it has reliable recovery, and a great typing, only weak to grass, which really isn't that common in UU, so uh, we may see Quagsire used a lot, and that kind of scares me because alongside things like Togekiss and Blissey, thankfully Slowbro is gone, but we may see things from RU start to be used a little bit more in UU too. I don't know. Not really sure. Um, so that is that. What else did I uh, want to talk about? Okay, let's go down to RU. We got Amistar, Wobbuffet, and Spiritomb. So Amistar and Spiritomb are moving up to RU from NU. Wobbuffet is moving down from UU uh, into RU. Now, Wobbuffet was actually BL for the longest time. And then it moved down to UU, kind of without anybody noticing, and now, again, it's moving down. And uh, part of the reason for that is Shadow Tag being illegal. No one's using it. I mean, that's just what it is. I have to, I'm going to check right now because I'm imagining that Wobbuffet gets some other uh, ability. I have to spell Wobbuffet correctly. I have to concentrate. So let's see. Uh, telepathy is its only other ability, so the only way you can use Wobbuffet in these lower tiers, UU and below that is, um, is to use telepathy. So, that makes a lot of sense that it is dropping down. Now, it does get a lot of usage, believe it or not, in Ubers, but that, I don't think that affects the actual tiering system because Ubers is a ban list and not an official tier and all that jazz. So, I don't know why I skipped over Amistar and Spiritomb just to talk about Wobbuffet, but that's... That's pretty much where we stand with Wobbuffet. Now, uh, Spiritomb is a different story. I could not believe that it was NU. Actually, Amistar is in the same boat, so I don't know why I'm going so out of order. I'm kind of skipping all over the place here. But these are two Pokemon that, in my opinion, really needed to go. Uh, well, I don't know if I want to put it like that. It wasn't that extreme, but uh, Amistar is so, so powerful with uh, Shell Smash. And uh, a decent, not, not the greatest move pool, but I mean, Ancient Power, uh, 
isn't that great, obviously, but he gets stabbed. And then we have uh, Hydro Pump, it can get Surf, it can get Skull, Ice Beam, the whole thing. And that's fairly good coverage. I mean, that's kind of a lot for NU to handle, to be perfectly honest with you. Especially because Almostar has decent offensive stats, too. Uh, so I'm really not upset about seeing that go to RU at all. I don't know if it's going to get used a lot. I guess uh, time will tell. As for Spear Tomb, the most common set that I've seen this gen is the Crow Tomb, the infamous Crow Tomb, uh, which is the Calm Mind set, obviously, and that kind of just destroys NU. You basically always had to have a counter for it uh, if you're going to be laddering up because it's kind of all over the place, especially towards the top of the ladder. I was up there for a while, um, several months ago, and it was all over the place. So finally seeing it move to RU makes a lot of sense. A lot of people used it. It was just good. I mean, and you take into account the fact that Spirit Tomb has an amazing typing, which it's only weak to Fairy, and it's not even a four times weakness. And in NU, it's really not that common of a type, and there aren't even that many attacking moves that are fairy type to begin with. So, uh, you add that to the fact that Spear Tomb gets dual stab priority in Sucker Punch, which is a bit unreliable, and then Shadow Sneak, which is still stab, and it gets Will O Wisp, and it gets Pain Split, and it's just it's a little bit too much for NU, so I'm kind of happy to see that go up as well. And last, but certainly not least, probably the one I'm most excited about is Kabutops finally, finally dropping down into NU from RU. That is really exciting to me. A lot of NU players are actually very, very excited about this. So I, it kind of scares me that a lot of people are going to use it and it's going to go right back up uh, next month or the month after. That's kind of scary, but I really think Kabutops needs to be down there. Special defense is absolute trash. Um, and it doesn't destroy the tier, it really doesn't have much in the way of boosting moves other than Swords Dance, and its speed isn't that great to begin with. It does get Aqua Jet, but it's just, it's such a frail Pokemon that setting up Swords Dance, if, you know, you want to give it a Life Orb or something, it'll die very soon after that. So, uh, yeah, like I said, it has the Swords Dance, has the Aqua Jet, you know, you can give it Waterfall, you can give it Stone Mist. I don't know if it gets Earthquake, that, I'm gonna just check, I'm curious now. I'm curious if it gets Earthquake, because I've never run Earthquake on a Kabutops. So let's check together. Let's check. Uh, no, it does not get Earthquake, and that may be another reason that it's dropping down, because it is weak to look electric, and having the EQ would be nice. It gets Earth Power, that's really not going to help it too much, neither is Dig. And looking at its move pool, it's actually quite bad on the physical side. Uh, it gets knockoff, so I can see that being a thing. Low kick could be a thing, maybe. But it also gets brick break. And then other than that, you've got the standard rock polish, uh, rock tomb, stone edge. Superpower could be useful. But I'm not seeing a lot. Its move pool looks pretty darn bad. And X scissor, that's pretty much it. That is pretty much it. And the last thing that you know, helps it be a little bit useful is the access to Rapid Spin, so you can use it as an offensive Rapid Spinner, but it's so frail, so having it in NU is going to be a lot of fun. I definitely, definitely want to test that out. I'm not sure exactly if that's really going to change the metagame too much, especially with things like Combuskin gone, because Kabutops would have been a nice switch into that. Well, not really. Not, never mind. And on a predicted Flare Blitz, sure, but Sky Uppercut, no. Kabutops would be dead in one hit. Anyway, I think I have babbled on long enough, so I'm going to ask what I ask in all of these videos. What do you guys think? I didn't have time to discuss every single little point that I wanted to. There was a lot more that I actually wanted to talk about, but I don't want to make this video uh, like a half an hour long. It's already over 20 minutes, so uh, yeah, we're going to just call it a video here let me know in the comment section what do you think of these changes um i don't know do you think certain pokemon will change tiers again really really quickly do you think that they're there to stay do you just are you fearing one specific pokemon do you have to change your team around how is it affecting you that kind of thing just give me your thoughts in the uh, comment section below and hopefully we can have some uh, some nice discussion going on. Remember, always be constructive, always be 
uh, not necessarily positive. You don't have to be like, yay, happy, everything, everything is wonderful, but don't want any excess um, negativity. That's just not necessary. Um, so if you have bad things to say about Smogon or its community or whatever, just keep it to yourself or just, you know, go post it somewhere else. Just it doesn't have any place on this video. All right, so that is going to be it for this time, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed this little uh, discussion that we had. I always have fun with these, so I, I like doing them. I look forward to this. I don't know why, because I just I literally just sit here and look at a blank screen, kind of, and just talk about random stuff. I don't know why that's so exciting, but I guess it's because I know that you guys are going to comment on stuff and we can have a discussion. It's just a fun time. So that is it for this time, and I will see you all for the next one. But until then, game on.